Welcome to the Sisterly Submitted Podcast, dedicated to changing the narrative about dating after 40. If you're interested in candid, unfiltered conversations between men and women, then you found your people. This is the podcast for you. Welcome, we're your hosts, Diane and Dawn, Hopeful Romantics, Changing the Narrative About Love After 40. We're excited to have our guest today, Dr. Tracy Williams, psychologist and financial therapist. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Hi, Dr. Tracy, we're so excited to have you. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about your background and um, you know your childhood? What brought you to where you are today and how you decided to go into the marriage of psychotherapy and finance? Yes, as, as absolutely. So technically, I started off as a kid and family psychologist. And during the pandemic, I realized that people were very worked up about money, about not having money, about losing their jobs about the stock market and buying stocks. And I was like, wait a minute, what's happening here? And once I started paying attention to it, I discovered the field of financial therapy. I was going through my own reckoning with my own finances. And I realized that not too many financial therapists exist, not too many who look like me. And so now here we are. I kind of have married both and I work with all ages and all kinds of things. So today's episode, No Romance Without Finance, is all about finances, personal finances, and how it shows up and plays out in relationships. It's gonna be a great conversation, but first we have a message from our sponsor. If you were offered the key to unlock the future of your dreams, a life filled with love, prosperity, and pure joy, would you take it? Ruth E. Daniels has developed a plan with the tools you need to unlock the potential within and manifest your dreams. This practical plan, including Daniels' manifesting guide, The Glamorous Life, her book of affirmations, and The Glamorous Life Journal, work in tandem to teach you step-by-step -step how to manifest love, wealth, and a life of bliss. Order The Glamorous Life set today and manifest the extraordinary life you deserve. So money plays a major role when it comes to relationships. And Dr. Tracy is here to help us examine our financial health and assess financial compatibility when we're considering partners. Yes, I like to say that financial health is as important as your emotional health and your physical health. And a lot of people don't realize that they have financial health, but literally everybody does. Yeah. How does financial incompatibility affect or impact a relationship, especially for people who are 40 and over? Yeah. So if you think about it, finances show up on date one. Where are we going? How much are we going to spend? Who's going to fit the bill? Finances are interwoven into all of our relationships, including dating. And in this age group, you're in a specific part of life where a lot of things are really important in terms of finances. You are established in your career, you may have adult children, you may have aging parents that you're taking care of, you're planning for your own retirement. So it becomes really important in connection with other people when you're dating, yeah. That's interesting because there's so many lists right now about the first date and where you can't go on your first date. Mm -hmm. And it has a lot to do with what someone can afford. And um, we've had conversations about how our 20 year old selves might have subscribed to that list. Mm -hmm. But the list that we have now, you know, over 40, looks a lot different. Like, yeah. are you kind? Are you considerate? <laughs> Did you show up on time? You know, that stuff is way more important, I think, than where are we going on our first, like, yeah. where are we going? Yeah, the priorities are different. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so can you explain the connection between financial stress and dating and relationship satisfaction among people over 40? Yeah, if you are stressed out, you're not having a good time. 
if you're worrying about money, whether it's your own, your partner's, or your money combined, then it's going to take a toll on the relationship, whether you're discussing it or not. For some people, they are just keeping it in the background and that stress is dormant, but it eventually explodes like a volcano. And how can p past financial experiences like divorce or bankruptcy uh, impact dating, especially in this age group? Oh, can it? Oh, absolutely. So it can impact your ability to trust other people as well as yourself. You may be recovering financially yourself and feel insecure in the dating pool because there may be expectations placed on you for what you can and cannot do. Um, that's just two examples. That hits home. Um, I personally have a lot of issues with trust in relationships because of my personal issues mm -hmm. with money. Um, I was talking to a colleague and talked about, you know, mentioned your segment and she was like, oh my God, I need to talk to her. I need to be on her cell phone right now. <laughs> and, and I hear that all the time. <laughs> but I mean, I think it's so important. That's why we wanted to do this, um, this topic, you know, explore the topic because there are so many things. And I think that for me now, I, I recognize what those issues are and how they play out and have played out in relationships. Um, I don't know that people, even myself, um, we probably go for a long time without really recognizing that, oh, the way I behave is really directly correlated to this situation that happened in my earlier years. And this is why I act this way about money. Yep, absolutely. I say finance is a little bit of math and a whole lot of emotions, a whole lot of yeah. emotions. I pay attention to the numbers way less than I pay attention to the emotions, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have a question that's a little bit off okay. <laughs> of what we are. So when it comes to um, financial compatibility and, say, sexual compatibility, mm -hmm. say you're sexually compatible with somebody, but you're not financially compatible, mm -hmm. is that, are you doomed for, for I mean, failure? you can have a good time. <laughs> I mean, but is, like, would you say if somebody is just, you're incompatible when it comes to finances, is your relationship doomed, especially, you know, when you're older? Right. Because we've all, we, you either have a 401k and a savings or you don't. You have been saving, you've been doing, you know, you have a certain lifestyle, you're frugal, or you're, you're spending more than you have. You're constantly living, you know, outside of your means. Can those two people come together and have a happily ever after? Have yeah. you seen that? That's a really good question. So in dating, there's a difference between dating and being committed and tying your life together uh, financially and legally. So if you're dating, sure, have a great time with your sexually compatible partner, right? <laughs> right. right. <laughs> but if you're starting to get serious and you're wanting to combine lives, then you really have to ask yourself, is this someone who is in line with my values? And if they're not, are they willing to shift? Because some people can and do shift and can get on the same page with their person. Okay, so it's kind of along those same lines, but um, what advice do you have for a mature woman like us um, who may earn more than their partner? Um, and then say he checks certain boxes, but he's not in the space that you wish he was in mm -hmm. um, when it comes to finances. Now, we're at a certain age and there's a certain thing as potential. Are we too old <laughs> to be talking about, oh, he's got potential? <laughs> I mean, like, seriously, is that, like, something that we should consider? Or absolutely. is it, like, too late? <laughs> no, absolutely. I think if you recognize that there are a lot more pros than cons and you are okay with letting go of some of your own expectations, then by all means, go ahead and date them. Uh, with making more than men, you have to be really careful about the conversations that you have and how you have them. You don't want them to feel that they are lesser than because of the financial situation. You wanna think of them as your equal because sure. essentially in partnership, you're equals. Um, there are some really good resources that speak directly to that. So there is an author in the finance space, her name is Farnoosh Tarabi, 
she has a book called When She Makes More, so that might be a good read for you. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily my question personally, <laughs> but I've been there before. Yeah. And so, um, and it didn't turn out, obviously. Um, but it's a it's a conversation that I think we have to have because there are a lot of, at least a lot of black women who are in a position where they make more than their partner. And um, I know personally, I would love for my partner to make more, um, but is that... Is it a deal breaker? Right. I mean, I, I think because of some of my own personal issues, I would like to have someone that, again, that I can trust to be there to be the breadwinner and yeah. the head of the household yeah. because I've been that. Yeah. You know, so when I hear that, what I hear is, and this is from the financial therapist perspective, okay. I am afraid that this person is not going to be able to protect me, take care of me, be there for me if I fall. Okay. And so you have to ask yourself, OK, financially, maybe they cannot do that, but can they do that in other ways? Are we able to combine our resources so that financially we'll be OK? Yeah. That's a good answer. <laughs> and I think some of it has to do with, you know, they might make a little bit less, but they might have more savings. They might mm -hmm. have more investments. They might have, you know, so people, you can't really look at a salary and determine someone's worth based on a salary. Right. So that's something. But it's time for us to have a little fun. <laughs> Dr. Tracy, we want to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. We're going to play a game called This or That. Oh, boy. Yeah, so we're going to give you two words or phrases, and you have to tell us which one resonates most with you. Okay. We're going to put 15 seconds on the clock. Okay, starting now. Okay, I'll give them to you. Coffee or tea? Tea. Beach or mountains? Beach, definitely. City or suburbs? City. New edition or V2K? Ooh, new edition. <laughs> new edition, woo-woo. <laughs> Stilettos or sneakers? Sneakers. Nerd or thug? Ooh, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Tupac or Biggie? Oh my gosh, Tupac all day, every day. <laughs> Hip hop or house? Oh, we're in time. <laughs> well, we can go. We can find out what's your last answer. Hip hop or house? Hip hop. Do it yourself or Task Rabbit? Do it myself. Good. <laughs> Whether oh, I should or sh I should or not. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and now back to our regularly scheduled programming. <laughs> so. What advice can you give to older singles on discussing finances? I know me personally, I don't like to talk about it. I don't want you to know how much I make. I don't want you to know how much I have in savings. I don't want you to know, you know. But as you said, if you are looking to become a partner, a life partner, you have to have those kind of discussions. Yeah. So how do you broach the conversation? So I usually say it is important to start off early if you don't talk about money at all, you're setting the precedent that we don't talk about money. And so it could be little things like, oh, how do you feel about splitting the check sometimes? That's one way to kind of introduce the topic. You can also just be blatantly honest. While I was dating, I said, you know what? Sometimes I like to talk about what's going on with the money. That's especially as the relationship is progressing and letting them know that this is something that I want to talk about. How comfortable are you with having that conversation? Um, don't do it from the beginning because you'll probably scare people off if you're like, OK, pull out your 401k statement. Let's see how it goes. Um, and so I think baby steps as things go on, just bringing up things as, as time goes on, it's important. Uh, as the relationship progresses, that's when you want to really find out the details. And it's kind of like jumping into bed together. You're not sure what they're going to think of your body, and you don't know what you're <laughs> going to think of their body. Right. And so you can acknowledge that it's a really vulnerable discussion to have. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not going to go on date one. Let's talk about this prenup. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> So are there any specific red flags that we should consider when we're entering a new relationship or um, while in a relationship? Yes. Number one, if they say that they don't want to talk about money at all, that would be a red flag. Ooh, it looks like there's a story. 
<laughs> but yeah, that's a red flag because chances are there's stuff going on for them financially that they probably don't want to address or don't want to expose. And I would be really cautious around that. That would be a big one. Another big red flag would be uncontrolled debt. So if they have debt and they don't know when they'll be paying it off, how they're planning to pay it off, that's also a red flag. And also just in general, if you think that they might be hiding things because there's something called financial infidelity where you hide your purchases mm -hmm. or you hide money and that can also be a really big red flag. Wow. Yeah. We grew up with some of that going on. Yeah. A lot yeah. of that going on. Yeah. It's more common than people realize. Which is so crazy because my mom was a single mom. Like, who's she hiding stuff from? <laughs> <laughs> That's really crazy, you know? And I'm just now, like, thinking back, you know? And, and I'm like, well, who was she hiding the money from? Yeah. But yeah. I guess it was because... Our grandparents. Right. Because <laughs> they were very frugal and uh -huh. they made um, plans and they you know, made investments mm -hmm. and, you know. Owned property and, you know, just didn't live on credit cards. Mm -hmm. They lived on their, they they were working, um, our grandfather was an accountant and our grandmother was an audiometer, an audiometrist. She did hearing <laughs> tests for the public oh, schools okay. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so they were, you know, they had not great, you know, great jobs, but, you know, my grandfather was CPA and they just had common lives. They shared one car. My grandfather took the bus every day to work. He worked in Chicago, wow. took public transportation every day, walked from the bus stop, and my grandmother drove to work. She had the car. And, you know, they just did it on... My grandfather had a boat that he... I mean, he, he they created a great life. They traveled mm -hmm. to Europe, and they did the things that people do. They had a great life but they didn't live outside of their means. Right. They didn't buy designer. Like, yeah. we use Scott tissue. They, they bought Scott <laughs> toilet paper and yeah. Tussie deodorant. Yeah. And, you know, and the Sears, like, um, laundry detergent. Mm -hmm. But they were able to keep it together, and they built, you know, a, a legacy because they had property that they left for their children. And so it's, it's really um, amazing. Yeah, and it's interesting that your mom then did something completely well, she's, different. That was my dad's parents oh, yeah okay. yeah gotcha. and so so that was for us it was um really a blessing because we got to see what both lives mm -hmm. looked like yeah. you know we liked the designer stuff that my mom was getting on credit mm -hmm. cards but we also learned the value of investing in property um my grandparents um were i was able to live in their apartment so i could when i was 24 buy my first condo wow. And a lot of other cultures do that. They allow, they set their kids up for success. Um, our culture doesn't do that as much. And um, I was, you know, thankful that I was able to take advantage of that. Um, is, instead of just staying there forever, I stayed there for like a year or two, and then I got my own place. Yeah. And every time um, I lived in an apartment, I always heard my grandparents saying, that's just like flushing your money down the toilet. And that's why I try not to live in an apartment, just because whenever I'm doing it, I feel like I'm just flushing my money down the right. toilet. This is not, I'm not getting any tax benefits. I'm not, you know, getting, you know. But that's any... because of how she thought. Right. There's nothing necessarily wrong with living oh, in an apartment. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah, 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 absolutely not. It's just that in my head, it's all about the investment and the money, I don't like to waste money. My grandfather was, like like Dawn said, super frugal. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that squeezes the toothpaste until <laughs> and the lotion and anything. He where recycled, that recycling before recycling is like a thing. <laughs> a thing. Yeah. But it's interesting how our experiences shape the way that we behave with money. All of those things influence what Absolutely. you end up doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, because we got the shopaholic gene, mm. you know, and I, I find myself, if I, uh, you know, if I'm depressed or something, I used to go shopping, and I will look in my closet, and I'll have multiple things that are the exact same. Mm -hmm. Like, I have the same black shoes mm -hmm. that, oh, my God, I already had these. <laughs> and it's just because I enjoyed going to the mall. It made me feel good. What is it? Financial therapy or retail? Retail, <laughs> retail therapy. therapy. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 
<laughs> I certainly did my share of retail therapy. Yeah, and that's because the brain produces those feel-good chemicals, whether it's retail therapy or for my mom, it's a bar of chocolate. <laughs> it's the same chemicals that your brain produces. But unfortunately, if my mom eats a bar of chocolate, she's not going to end up in credit card debt, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what strategies can individuals over 40 use to navigate the financial aspects of cohabitation and joint financial relation, joint financial responsibilities in a relationship? Okay, so definitely having a plan ahead of time before moving in together. How are we going to manage the bills? What's mm -hmm. going to be the plan? Uh, also outlining what your goals are financially what your partner's goals are, and then what your goals will be as a team. Okay. Uh, for instance, do we want to travel? How are we going to afford traveling? How often do we want to go out for a date night? Things like that. Yeah, definitely want to have a plan. You also want to know of a couple other things, like do you have insurance? <laughs> <laughs> Does your car have insurance? Right. <laughs> things like that. Too. Yeah, interesting oh. that you mentioned insurance because um, my, the company that I work for, they now have um, where if you're married or you can have a partner and your partner's job doesn't offer insurance, then you can be on, they can be on our insurance huh. for free. But if, if their job offers them insurance, you have to pay this, this oh, additional fee, that's interesting. Which, is, which is interesting yeah. um, because, you know, it's like you're, Somebody's going to reap the benefits of right. that. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. There are other things to think about, too. If you have adult children, are you financially supporting your adult children? Are they right. okay with that? Right. Yeah. Or your aging parents? Yeah. 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 Well, there are so many things. And this has been, like, such a great conversation. And, Dr. Tracy, we want to have you back, if you will. Absolutely. You'd be um, willing to come back because we have more to discuss. Yes. So um, much more. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so how can people connect with you on social okay so I am all over the place <laughs> my private practice is Pui consulting p-o-u-i and I'm currently seeing adults and couples and then I'm also doing social media a little bit I was telling you earlier I'm having fun on TikTok <laughs> so that's under my other name healthy wealthy roots okay yeah. all right anybody you want to shout out before we go? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe my baby, Elijah. Yes. Hi, Eli. <laughs> you should be asleep. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Dr. Tracy, for joining us on the Sisterly Submitted podcast, and we look forward to seeing you again. Yes, I'd love to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. This episode was sponsored by Fertile Myrtle Publishing. Get your glamorous life set to manifest love, wealth, and a life of bliss. Available on Amazon. Be sure to check out a brand new episode next Thursday. See, See you next time. time.